What's up guys? So I'm back. Sorry I was away for so long, but you know, uh, the band kind of got a little busy, you know, working all that stuff. So I'm back and yeah, I got a review of New Levels, New Devils by Polyphia. This is the album I was planning on coming back to YouTube with, New Polyphia, Darker Polyphia. So yeah, I'm gonna get right into this review, and I'm really, really excited, as you can see. So, first track featuring Jason Richardson, "Nasty," just like in intriguing, like very, very intriguing. They were doing this really cool thing where they had harmony and like some weird little bend or something in there, like some vibrato, and it sounded really cool, kind of like squirmy and this really kind of cool really caught your ear because it really kind of got deep down there in your eardrum so really really love that bass was just great the the track had just an amazing bounce to it like it was just super super bouncy like you couldn't stop moving while listening to it it was just awesome introduction and they I don't know how they, like, what I would call it is they did, like, this thing where it sounded kind of like a dark sparkle, where it was kind of like, you know, kind of reminded you of, like, glitter or, you know, those anime scenes where water's falling and you can see, like, the light kind of, like, refract in it. It was really, really cool, but it sounded dark and it was really, really awesome. I call that, like, a little dark sparkle thing. So that was really awesome. Solo was great. Jason Richardson, anything that dude decides to play is great. I did feel kind of like his solo went on a little too long, though. Not like that's a bad thing, but like I feel like it could probably end it before it went into that last section and the riff changed. And we could have some maybe harmony stuff or maybe like Tim or Scott could have done a solo or something like that. And I feel like solo went on a little bit too long, but that's not really that big of a deal because no, it's Jason Richardson. So how do you not want to listen to him like forever anyway? Very, very nice. I felt this album was more like a prologue rather than the first chapter. Like, I felt like it was kind of like, because there's that's no reason why I kind of wanted the solo to go a little bit shorter, because it kind of just seemed to, like, extend the intro phase of the album. And I felt like it was more of a prologue or, you know, a forward to the, like, start of the album. But that's that's not a bad thing. It was still a really, really good track. Loved it. And so OD, just, like crazy i mean when i saw the music video for this i was just like wow this is very very interesting but it was just crazy very frenetic start out you know like just super frenetic and just kind of like not like crazy super crazy frenetic but frenetic in like the polyphia kind of way you know what i mean but really frenetic like this seemed like the real like opening track of the album like this was like the first chapter after nasty you know what i mean like this really seemed like to open it up and really kind of show you that it's like a different polyphia different kind of sound different kind of mood different kind of feel so that was really really cool uh the transition like after the after the main riff the do 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 that was a nice little throwback kind of the older polyphia sound the more kind of smooth kind of like more uh happy R&B kind of Polyphia sound that, you know, we're all kind of used to. So that was really cool. And it was just a really cool, like, kind of dark, but also kind of old school Polyphia sounding track. And I like how that ending kind of transitioned into the next track, which is Death Note, which was a great title choice. And it, and it sounded like, you know, happy. You know what I mean? Like, you know, first two tracks were kind of like, you know, a little dark or something like that. This next just sounded kind of happy and kind of reminded me more of the old sound. And it just gave me that feeling of like, you know, those scenes in movies or anime when the character is just standing like this and the camera's like doing a circle around them and they're like the winds in their face and it's like the sun's like up, coming up or shining right in their face. Kind of reminded me of that. So it was really cool. Just like that whole like scene and feeling reminded me of that a lot, you know. It was also pretty chill, you know, like for a song called Death Note, it wasn't like as dark as, you know, OD or GOAT or anything like that, but it was really just really nice and chill, and it kind of had, you know, a little, like old Polyphia sound in there, so I really like that. And then we have Bad, you know, Back to Dark, very, like, slow, I think it was maybe like the slowest track on the album, and then like the mood, that whole, like, slowness created was just great, and made it like heavier 
and maybe not in like sound wise, but like emotionally, it made it feel a lot more heavy and dramatic just by it being slow. And it reminded me kind of, I don't know why, but it reminded me of a noir film. Like, you know, the camera just going through and, like, seeing the detective in the trench coat, you know, kind of turned around looking at you. I don't know why it reminded me of that, but it reminded me of, like, a noir film. And, yeah, I really don't know why it reminded me of that. That was really, 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 really weird. But I think the part I liked most about it was the part where the finger snapping. Because, like, I like to play, you know, instruments and stuff, but I can't play anything up to that level. And there are really no lyrics for me to sing, so the finger snapping made me feel, like, included. And made me feel like I could, like, take part in the song and contribute something. Even though I can't, like, play instruments or write like they do. But the finger snapping is a cool little element. And also kind of remind me, like, that little poetry club vibe where, you know, you just snap your fingers a bunch and stuff. So the finger snapping is a really, really cool thing to put in there because it made me feel more connected and more involved because like if I see them live I can actually do that instead of just you know like doing this to the song to the wrist you know so the finger snapping is a really really cool element to add in there and we go on to drown again another one that sounded kind of old school polyphia sound it also made me think of those breakup music videos you know where you see the girl like heading out the door and the guy's like, oh no, no, don't leave, and like, it's all in slow-mo, and the music's playing over the scene, and you can't hear them talk or whatever, and you know, the guy's just kind of like, doing this, and he's like, trying to get her back, and he's like, in the rain, all sad, and you know, all those typical, like, breakup, you know, media videos, reminded me of that a lot, so that was really cool, and it also sounded a little tropical, like, it kind of made me think of, like, palm trees and beaches and sun, uh... Yeah, that was interesting. But a little tropical sound in there too, which was really good. I like that. And we got Saucy, which is like the opening riff. Like they did this thing where they play the riff and then they play like another part of the riff and it sounds like the rhythm's different, but it's not. But it sounds like they kind of switched the rhythm up and went back to the old rhythm. And I think that's really cool whenever like any band does that. Because there was like, there wasn't really like any bass or any drums. So it was just like the guitar and then made it seem like kind of the rhythm went a little like into like an on meter or something like that. And then went back into like a regular meter or something like that. Really, really cool. I just love how the way that sounded. And this track, this track was very sexy. Like I like it. You know, it was very just like... I don't know, it just had that kind of vibe, you know, it just made you feel like, you know, that kind of like sensual vibe to it, and I really like that, it was, it was, it was very slick, the way they made, the way they put that mood in there, and I was just like, okay, this feels really like, sexy, and I like it, so yeah, that was really good, um, got lost in this one a lot, it was just like, really just, really just like flowed really well you know it just flowed extremely extremely well and like it ended and then i was like wait what like it was over i was like oh wow that was like over way too quick <laughs> like that song should have been like probably like 30 seconds longer maybe more but uh very very nice yes 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 and then after that we have Yas. And of course gotta add the obligatory Yas Queen. So yeah. Definitely I had to have that Yas Queen in there. But this one was very jazzy. It was very uh very jazzy. The whole the whole composition felt kinda jazzy, which I really, really enjoyed. It just felt like I don't know, a little more I don't know. I don't wanna say like I don't know, it felt kind of, I don't know, it just felt kind of jazzy, and jazz is always cool and really awesome, so it just felt really jazzy, and, uh, yeah, there was, like, a little bit of vocals in there, uh, there was, like, it was just like really, really small amount of vocals they put in there. I think it was nothing like singing, just like some kind of sound or whatever. But those fit in real, really well. The guest solos made the song. Okay, the guest solos just they made the song. Okay, the guest solos were pretty much just like the icing on the cake, the decoration on the cake, probably the eggs too. Like the solos were just. 
smooth and buttery. It was like, you know that scene in 300 where he goes to see the, um, the fortune teller, I forgot what they call it, but it wasn't the fortune teller, it was something else. And she's just like dancing in silk and all these like robes are, are flying around her and stuff. It reminded me of like that. It was just so really smooth and buttery and it just like flowed really, really well. It was like listening to fine silk. It's like, it, you know how silk feels? It was like that, but for your ears. It was like how touching silk would sound. Or if you transfer the feeling of touching silk into like hearing silk, like, I don't know, if, I don't know if I'm making any sense here, but it was just really, really smooth, buttery, flowed really, really well. The solos were just amazing in there. This another one. It was over too quick. Like this one should have been longer too, because I could have listened to that song for like probably like five or six minutes straight. It was just awesome from beginning to end. Jazzy, flowed really smooth, silky, buttery, great solos. Loved it. So I have So Strange after that, which was uh, more R&B to me, more like, oh man, I totally forgot. It, it, oh man, I, I was envisioning something else in my mind at this time when I was listening to the song, but I totally forgot what it was. But it, this one just sounded a lot more R&B to me. This one definitely sounded like it could have lyrics over it and like a nice little R&B song over it, and it actually had lyrics, like actually, let me look over here real quick, I, yeah, I had never heard of Kuko before, so while I was listening to this song, I actually looked him up, saw the guy was in like a car accident, but he's in um, stable condition recovering now, so good for him, but I had never heard of him before, but... And, you know, the lyrics weren't, like, you know, a full, like, song with the lyrics. They're just the same phrase, Peter, over and over. But it actually worked really well with the song. You know, it didn't, like, clash with it. didn't overpower it. didn't make it seem cliche. didn't make it seem cheesy. And, you know, it didn't have me saying, oh, why are there lyrics in a polyphia song? Blah, 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 blah. I don't, like, actually like the lyrics. I like the flow they had. like how they went with the song. And it was really, really cool. Like, it was pretty good, you know, like, for a polyphia song with no lyrics over it, you know. I actually liked it. It was really, really cool. So, ballsy. Props to them for to doing that and pulling that off. You know, and we had Rich Kids, which uh, was just another really one. This one was, I think, the more the most atmospheric one because they had a lot of more uh, residual sounds that occurred throughout the whole track, other than just you know like the voices and. Um, The voices and Yas and, you know, just like kind of little sounds that would be here or there. This one had like atmospheric sounds that occurred throughout the whole song. And that really made the song just kind of like way more atmospheric and way more, it pulled you in more. Because you had like a, an element there to focus on that was always there. You know, that wasn't as frenetic as the guitars or as percussive as the bass or as busy as the drums, you know. So that really had a good atmosphere and pulls you in more, made you really kind of like really focus on what was happening under it, you know. So that was really, really cool. And this reminds me of like a memory lane montage, you know, where the character like has a hoodie on and they're walking past, you know, like old basketball court they used to go to or like a bridge I used to play on or an abandoned building that they always used to walk by or something like that. It was like one of those like memory lane songs. And it just really kind of had a good mood about it. You know, it wasn't too intense. It wasn't too like light. It wasn't, you know, too sad, too happy, or too dark, or anything like that. It was just like a nice little kind of memory lane song. And it just had a nice little atmosphere about it. And of course, you know, he's that young. You know, just always good. And then we have Goat, which, now that I think about it, was a very suitable closing track. Like, I watched all the music videos for it. Like, I saw the Goat, like, the day it premiered. Because I actually had a YouTube notification about it. And it was just like really nice and dark, I was like, wow, Polyphia is dark now, but it actually makes excellent sense as a closing track, because to me, they pretty much, like, wrote, like, an essay with this, you know, it's just, like, Goat pretty much summarizes, like, hey, this is Polyphia, we're still Polyphia, but we're different now, at a new level, facing new challenges, you know, our sound's new, we're doing, like, new things, and, you know, this is us now, we're here to stay, and there's more of this to come, you know, it's just, like, it has that... It has an intro that really just gets you. It just grabs you like that. 
you know, and then it just has the middle, like everything that happens in between it, all the bass, all the riffs, all the drums, it's just like, it, it, like you can definitely tell they're just at a new level, they've gotten so much better, they've written like darker stuff now, you know, and it's just like the ending of the song just kind of really just lets you know that this is it, like strap in, like you know what you're in for now. You know, it was just an amazing song from beginning to end. Loved it, loved it. And so, I'm going to talk about the album as a whole. Like, Polyphia albums have always had an overall theme. Like, you know, um, you know, Inspire, Renaissance, they all had an overall theme. And they all had, like, an overarching similar sound in each song. But I never, like, really thought that they connected from one song to another that well. Whereas this one, you know, every song ends with some kind of, like... Well, most songs end with, like, a little, like, piano riff or, you know, just, like, a little riff that kind of brings you down. But also segues into the next song. But it doesn't segue into the next song where every track seems like one whole song, like Unleash the Archers does, if you know what I mean. But I felt like this one was way more cohesive because it actually went into every song and led you into that song from the previous song, but not by, you know, just like starting the next song and making it seem like the whole thing was one long song. It was very cohesive and connected. It was very, very, very well mixed. Like the guitars sounded great as they always do. The bass is way more percussive. Like if you watch the music videos, Clay's doing a lot more slap and... You know, he's uh, using Ibanez now, because Ibanez is the best bass uh, maker ever. But he's way more percussive now, and that really shines through a lot. And the other Clay, the drummer, is just going pretty much all cylinders every song. But it's not like like he's going super crazy, where he's like, you think he's doing too much, or he's overpowering anything else. Like, he's going crazy, but he's doing it in such a controlled and refined way. And it, it works, and it just sounds great, you know, especially with this kind of stuff, like, just be, to be able to write, you know, cohesive and sensible drum and bass parts under these kind of guitar riffs, like, I don't even think I could do that, you know, and it's just the way that the rhythm section in that band is just amazing, you know. All the solos sounded great, you know, Jason Richardson always sounds great, I don't know who Ichika is, but... Great. Mateo Sasato always sounds great. Always. Uh, Mario and Eric from Sean. Always talented dudes. Kuko. Very, very nice lyrics. Very, very nice vocalization over there. Yvette Young, always great. You know, Covet. Went and saw them live on the Lit AF tour when they opened for Polyphia. And gonna go see them again on this tour. But it's just... Like, when they finally, when I saw a notification for GOAT, I was like, okay, new Polyphia. And I was like, wow, this is really dark. You know, they play, the way they play with the light and the dark in the church, I was like, wow, this is actually dark. And Polyphia, you know, releasing new stuff. Like, it's going to be really interesting to see how they do, like, dark stuff. Because all this stuff's kind of, you know, happy and kind of um, romantic and really kind of, like, sensual and flowing. And this is very, like, staccato and dark and, you know, like... I wouldn't want to say more fractured than normal, but it just, like, was more frenetic and, you know, evil-sounding, you know? And, of course, you know, the album title fits that perfectly. But this was just really a surprise. You know, I was really surprised that they went, you know, dark with it. I was really wondering where they were going to go after, like, the most hated with all the, you know, kind of, like, you know, EDM kind of techno influences. But they uh, they definitely went in the right direction, man. This is really, really good stuff. Like I was really I was really surprised by it. I just, I just you know, I never expected to play for you to go this route because they were always like I said so happy and stuff. But this is a really, really nice surprise. Um excellent guest solos, excellent composition, excellent bass playing, excellent guitar playing, excellent drums. It was just really like, they're at the top of their game right now. They're really at the top of their game. And they're just doing great. I love this direction they're going. I can't wait to see some of these songs played live on the tour. And I really can't wait to see what they do next. Because 
they're doing really well. Like, they're doing really, really well. So, yeah, that was uh, New Levels, New Devils review. Um, yeah, it's like 3.08 a.m. right now. So, yeah, sorry if I sound kind of tired or kind of low volume. Everyone's kind of sleeping. But, yeah, definitely, definitely go check this album. Definitely buy it. Go see this tour. It's going to be awesome. These are really talented guys and they're doing great stuff. Uh, I'm going to be back now. I'm going to be doing uh, vlogs, reviews. And if you like this video, give me a like, comment, or you can subscribe. Definitely, definitely go get a sound to listen. Like, I got home about one or so, then wanted to see if it was up on Spotify. So I get the jump on, and it was. So I put on the headphones, got my little notepad out, and just like cranked it out. Excellent, excellent listen. I'll probably listen to it again tomorrow when I wake up. Yes, excellent. Excellent. Yeah, awesome. So, thank you all for watching, and rock on.